So number one then from this new hire using the specimen paper number one, an integration. Of course, when it says the new hire, that just seems to be exactly the same as the original hire before 2008 when they put in the multiple choice. Because prior to that, you had paper one for 60 marks with short questions and paper two for 70 marks with longer questions. Right, so it's a integrate. But the first thing is, you don't know how to differentiate or even integrate an expression that looks like this that's all jumbled up. You only know how to differentiate or integrate either a single term, and a term is made up of a coefficient, a multiplying number, and a variable with a certain power. Or the other type would be a sine or a cosine, but that doesn't apply here. So this would have to be somehow transformed into just a string, an expression involving single terms. Another thing that I've seen before is a confusion between something like a division, a quotient, or a product, and that is a confusion with a function of a function, that somehow you think that this is connected with the chain rule because you learnt that later. No, there's quite a clear distinction between them. As far as the higher is concerned, you'll only get two varieties of the chain rule of a function of a function, and that is either you'll have some inner function, like 2x plus 1, and you'll find a power of it, or you'll have some inner function and you'll find either a sine or a cosine of it. Now, the difference between this situation and these is the outer function, the one that's waiting to act, has got no value at all. It's got no value until the inner one is evaluated and feeds it a number, which then gives it a value. Those functions are acting on this, they're waiting on this to feed them numbers. These two parts here aren't acting on each other the same way as a function of a function because they've got their own independent values. That doesn't care what this one comes to. It's got its own value for each x and vice versa. So it's not a function of a function, it's just a division. Right, the first problem is going to be how can we get a string of single terms? Well, just since it's expressed as a division, why not divide? And that says they're both divided by, because the line goes under both of them, 3, I mean 2x squared. So I've got 3x cubed over 2x squared plus 1 being divided by 2x squared dx. Well, oh, don't let that scare you there. That's just like a condition for this to exist because you can't divide by 0. So that's just telling you that this wouldn't have an answer if x was 0. And then just finish that off then. So 3 divided by 2 is 3 divided by 2 cubed over squared would just give you power 1, so I'll not even mention it. Now this is one that you could get into a little bit of a mess with. You know that it has to be in this form with the x on top to some power, so you're bringing the x up. Don't drag the 2 up with it. Leave coefficients alone. It's only the x's that get moved about. It's only the x I want on top, so it's, if it's squared underneath, it'll be the power negative 2 on top. Now, in fact, you have to go all the way to this to get your first mark. You may have decided to do that as a multiplication, thinking, well, 1 over 2x squared. So you could multiply by that. Same problem. Don't drag the 2 up. That's a half of x to the negative 2, multiplying 3x cubed plus 1. And then it's just the same thing. A half of 3 is 3 up in 2. Multiplying the terms, add the powers. 3 and negative 2 is 1, and then 1 times that just leaves that the same. But so that's just the first mark out of the 4. Now the next two marks come from doing these two parts, which both follow exactly the same pattern though. Add 1 to the power, so power 1 goes up to power 2. Divide by that new power, whichever way you want to do it. Well I've already got a division line, so I'll just put my times 2 underneath it, plus 1 over 2. Add 1 to the power. Watch when you're adding to a negative 2. Negative 2 means you've dropped down 2. Adding 1 brings you up to negative 1. But divide by that new one. Now I could just switch that to a negative, but I think I'll put that down there just now. But don't forget, there could have been some constant that would have disappeared under differentiation. So when you integrate, it would pop back in again. Right, put these wee equals in. Now it's just a case of tidy it up and that'll be the answer. So that's 3 quarters of x squared. That's minus a half of, I'll put plus c. It all depends how you want to write that. 
I'll just write x to the negative 1. That would probably do, and that would get you the 4 marks. But I think I would write it, but maybe you shouldn't, I don't know, as 1 over, and I'll put that x back underneath. But you can just leave it as minus a half x to the negative 1. That's perfectly fine, if you like that kind of thing.